Hello everyone and welcome to this part of uh, the summer school where I'm going to talk about uh, Hyperion and imaging mass cytometry. My name is Stian Tornos and I am a PhD candidate here at the University of Bergen. Uh, I started my PhD in March last year and one of my focus areas are the use of uh, Hyperion and imaging mass cytometry uh, to do deep tissue profiling on head and neck uh, cancer trying to understand the heterogeneity of cancer-associated fibromasts. Um, working with Hyperion involves several diff different steps, uh, starting with selection of antibodies that you want to use, uh, followed by uh, applying a master mix with all of the antibodies to tissue samples. Uh, then the tissue slides uh, are put into the Hyperion machine, machine itself. Mm -hmm. uh, for this mm -hmm. uh, first part, I want to explain a little bit about how the machine itself uh, and how it works. Uh, for the next part, I'll go through in more detail the different steps before samples are put into the machine and what happens after the machine has done its part. The reason why we can use more markers with imaging mass atometry compared to using technologies uh, for fluorochromes is because each uh, antibody for a parent is labeled with a polymer, uh, with, which is linked to a specific metal with a certain mass. Uh, for fluorophores, you have a huge range of wavelengths that uh, gives uh, the spectrum of detection, and these can overlap with each other. Uh, this leads to the requirement to deconvolute each individual signal. Uh, but with pure metal isotopes, we can easily distinguish each uh, individual marker since they have a specific metal with a specific mass uh, that allows for uh, quantification of many more markers compared to using fluorophores. Uh, the metal tags that we are using are mostly from the lanthanide series. Uh, these are rare earth metals, but they are abundant metals um, that can easily be found. They are not technically rare. Uh, they are safe to work with, uh, which is important. Uh, they are not radioactive. Uh, and they have the same chemistry, which allows us to use the same polymer. Uh, one thing that is important is that these metals are not present in biological uh, samples, which reduces the background noise. Um, at the moment, uh, the technology allows for four, uh, 52 markers uh, to be used simultaneously with a resolution at uh, 0 0.5 uh, micrometers. And the speed for imaging acquisition is at uh, 200 Hz, around two, uh, 20 minutes for uh, a 0 0.5 uh, millimeter square area. The chemistry behind labeling antibodies with metals starts with mild reduction of the antibody. This converts the disulfides in the FC fragments to thiols. Then the unlabeled polymeric tag is conjugated to the antibody through a bismillamide linker, and this um, polymeric tag contains ligands for metals. Metals are then added to the solution, which binds to the metal tag and antibody is subsequently conjugated with metals and ready to be used for hyperion. Uh, advantages of imaging mass cytometry are that there is an impressive dynamic range because the use of primary conjugates. Uh, and we don't use uh, secondary antibodies or enzymatic amplification. Uh, this uh, results in that we do not saturate the signal, which can be a problem with immunohistochemistry or immunofluorescence. Uh, as I said previously, these lanthanide metals are not present in biological samples, so uh, what we measure is not there uh, regionally, uh, meaning that uh, autofluorescence is not a problem. Uh, the stain is uh, highly reproducible, and there is uh, low spillover between channels, which means that it uh, is easy to use many markers at the same time and less complicated corrections uh, if needed. A big benefit is that we are staining all the antibodies at the same time with uh, an individual cocktail which allows for improved standardization across different tissues and samples. Uh, a unique benefit is that tissue staining uh, related to imaging mass cytometry is very, very stable 
Uh, once you stain your tissue uh, with antibodies of interest and dry them out, you can store them and use them up to one year uh, later with uh, no decrease in signal. And this is because the isotopes are embedded in the samples and this uh, does not uh, degrade in relation to enzymatic activity. Um, potential challenges for using in IMC is that there is a limited uh, limitation to how many markers that can be used, uh, which is around 50 at the, the present time. The procedure of uh, imaging acquisition is somewhat uh, time-consuming uh, when you cover larger areas. Um, the resolution is around one micro uh, molar, and which gives subcellular uh, resolution and good specificity for each individual marker. Uh, the workflow for imaging mass atometry is very comparable with immunohistochemistry or immunofluorescence. We use tissue sections that has been fixated onto a tissue glass slide, and these can either be formalin fixed, paraffin embedded, or frozen sections. Uh, these slides uh, go through the same procedure as, uh, for example, with uh, IHC, where samples are treated with saline, alcohol of different concentrations, and antigen retrieval. For IMC, uh, a master mix containing all the antibodies of interest are put uh, on the glass slide with uh, tissue samples, uh, which is then dried out. Uh, then the slide with the tissue and antibodies are inserted into the Hyperion machine. Here, uh, a laser rasterizes across the tissue, uh, so pulse-wise it ablates uh, one micron spot of tissue, uh, which is then aerosolized into the plasma of the Cytoph and ICP mass spec. Uh, and this is uh, then completely atomized um, at each spot of tissue, and each individual metal uh, in that spot of tissue. Uh, and these metals are then measured in the time of flight mass spec. For each laser shot, uh, we do one measurement of all the potential metals in that spot, uh, which uh, results in a pixel in the digital reconstructed image that contains over 50, uh, 40 or 50 uh, measurements from the different markers of interest. Um, I hope that this uh, explains to some extent how the machine works and how uh, uh, results are generated. Uh, in the next part I will start talking about the different steps required before using the Hyperion machine itself and the results from using the machine.